So this poem, uh, which is from uh, After Newtown Massacre, A Prayer. And then I'll read a poem about New York City. <clears throat> After Newtown Massacre, A Prayer. How can I forget you? How can I forget you on the edges of these shores, emblazoned from the tears of the innocent, dripping like tar in the fields of snow? How can I forget you, blue rivers that flowed in your starry eyes, soft airs of the riverbeds that polished the enamel of my sparkling teeth and sculpted curves of my muscular limbs, the warm water wells of your breaths that pulled the bow of my backbone and sent me twirling your plaything across the world, your blood that wove the coat of my conscience. How can I forget you? How can I forget the niche in the crevice of our crumbling brick wall, vermilion powder paste, grains of rice, and a blunt coin tied up in a scarlet thread, where you once laid a winged seed to sprout a deity out of it. How can I forget you, maker of my forehead? How can I forget you, maker of my forehead, horoscope of my mind, sap of the lust tree of my body, the only earth, the only earth of my galaxies, quiet cosmic engineer of my soul. How can I forget you, especially on these shores, emblazoned from the tears of the innocent, dripping like tar in the fields of snow? Thank you. Wow. Uh, this is the book, uh, the shorter one that we have brought. And I, uh, the poem begins with, the, the book begins with my mother. I dream of my mother all the time here when I come. So it's, it's very strange. Um, but I love New York City because I travel a lot and I, I go all over the world. And that's what I do for a living. And uh, when I come, I mean, when you live in New York, I've lived long here, taught at Heidelberg and, you know, Queens University in, in Belfast. But then uh, what is important is when I come to New York, you can never belong to anywhere else, you know. You, are, you can never be European, Italian or, or German or Swiss. You, uh, uh, Hindus, you can never be Hindu because you'll be born in a Hindu, you know. But when you come to New York City, you are in New York the next day. That's right. Nobody yeah. bothers, you know. They say, oh, you are a New Yorker. So the poem is called New York a New Yorker. And it tells how you become a New Yorker. And uh, it takes a while, but this is how it happens. You are a New Yorker. The day you learned and the day you learn to notice the sparkle of sullen silences snapping the darkness of damp burrows, a stop taking notes of wild blizzards racing along the signature shore, you are a New Yorker. The day you start hearing Gaga songs in the screeching subway cars, a stop saying, I don't know no Spanish to Latino visitors seeking directions, you are a New Yorker. The day you start understanding the thick jumble of subway announcements or roadside pronouncements, you don't have to be a Rockefeller to be a generous guy, you are a New Yorker. The day you stop taking the free Staten Island ferry to click a perfect shot of Statue of Liberty, a stop visiting Times Square at night and forget to find a way out of his labyrinth, or learn to walk the Brooklyn Bridge without a secret desire to dangle a padlock on one of its rafters, or stop seeing Walt Whitman sitting atop its edge looking for his beautiful boys and vagabond fairies entering the sheltered bay, you are a New Yorker. The day you stop watching, the, the day you stop fearing the spy dogs at Grand Central, recognize the homeless that hang out at the Port Authority or Jackson Heights. The day you pass through the shrunken midnight of Sutphin Boulevard or Jamaica subway station without holding your breath in terror, you are a New Yorker. The day you start loving Starbucks coffee, wafting along the white glassy Manhattan malls, or learn to chew the Brooklyn bagel, or lap up the steaming loneliness of the chatty dog walkers along the Central Park, or learn to make love and forget the face of your partner, you are a New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> the, the day you stop guessing the origin of blonde teenager, reading the current issue of New Yorker, Stop looking at the bare shoulders of the Vietnamese girl sitting on a, on a, uh, sitting on a free Wi-Fi table near the entrance of Sonai's Village Cafe, opening and closing like a red lips on the first day of winter snow. Or there you pass by the Magnolia Bakery, loaded from its famed cupcakes and moon-sized cookies. That day you stop visiting White Horse Tavern to pose against Dylan Thomas's drunken portrait. Or stop hearing John Lennon's voice climbing the fire escape ladders of Hotel Chelsea, 
I stopped looking for the room where she gave Leonard Cohen a blowjob. You are a New Yorker. <laughs> That you stop gawking at the gay couples. That you stop gawking at the gay couples on L train, romancing like Bollywood couples, on or fervently discussing pussy power, animal rights, or their ailing pets or parents. That you stop staring at the sadistic Jews of Williamsburg, their curls dangling out of the black velvet caps like Lord Shiva's sacred serpents. You are a New Yorker. <laughs> that you learn to laugh like a Latino bartender. Or smile like a Filipino waitress standing beside her stuffed rose pig like a queen. Or stop looking at the cleavage of nude sport at Central Park. Or learn to check your seat in the subway for a stain of shit a homeless might have left for you. You are a New Yorker. And lastly, the day the girl from Cleveland, Ohio, behind the counter of Greenwich Cafe, gives you her email or offers a free top up on your coffee, or lets you take her out. You are a New Yorker. Beautiful.